Hi and welcome to the show. I'm your host Patrick Shearer and you're watching In The Studio. The show is brought to you by Davis Media Access and is broadcast on Davis Community Television. That's Comcast Channel 15 and AT&T Uverse. We're also online at davismedia.org, so log on and check us out. My guests today are Shelby Zaccardi and Elsie Young from Spectra Magazine. Hi guys and thanks for joining us. Hi, Hi. thanks for having us. So what is Spectra? Well, Spectra is actually a charitable magazine run completely by students here in Davis okay. that hopes to bridge communities and increase understanding between people by sharing their stories. So what we do is we go out and we try to collect stories mm -hmm. from people in the community and then publish them in hopes that with this new understanding of people reading each other's stories, we can create a better and more peaceful world. And so we're um, hoping to connect or collect stories from both the local community here in Sacramento um, as well as abroad. And then eventually we're going to distribute our magazine again here locally and also abroad. Fantastic. Yeah. So when, where did the spark come from? Where did the, where did the idea start? Actually our founder, which is also, who is also our editor-in-chief, can't mm -hmm. be here tonight, but she came up with this idea through this project called Global Journal Project, mm -hmm. which we tried to become a part of, but due to some legal matters and some district policies, we couldn't actually do that. Huh. So we decided to take that idea and run with it and create it our own. So we decided to create our own magazine called Spectre Magazine, and we incorporated some of the ideas from this Global Journal Project, yep. but we also incorporated a lot of our own and okay. tried to make it our own, pretty much. Um, so tell us about how the two differ. You know, what, what have you taken from the Global Journal Project and what have you, you, know, what have you taken from your own inspiration? Mm -hmm. So the main objective of the Global Journal Project was, um, like we said before, to gather stories from the community and publish them in a magazine that would then be distributed in the, um, in the students' local community as well as abroad. Uh, and so that was the main idea that we took away from it. Yeah, but we also tried to bring in this whole connectiveness mm. as our own. So we created our own mission statement and we created our own mission that differed slightly from the Global Journal Project. Okay. So our mission is to connect communities rather than just publish them. Great. And how long have you been publishing for? Actually, we just had our first publication last month on January 27th. Oh, now, um, it's not your first ever, like, is, was that uh, the first print or the first one ever? First one ever, actually. Ever. We're very yeah. new. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and so that actually isn't a print issue, that's just an online only issue for okay. now. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting. It was our first big publication that we're very excited about. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, did, do any of you have any previous experience with you know, publishing or writing or magazines or, or anything like that? Not outside of the classroom, no. Okay. Um, our editor-in-chief does. She worked at the Davis High School newspaper for a while. And we also, most of our editors are also editors on the hub, yep. the Davis and newspaper. Yeah. But other than that, none of us have really done this before. Okay. And everyone's a volunteer, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, was it difficult finding people to, to be part of the project or kind of, you know, once you got once you got the, the idea, you know, was it fairly easy to kind of rally people to the cause? Um, that's actually something we're working on right now. Ah. We're trying to <laughs> gather more, more and more people. We have a group of about 15 students right now. And that group, it was actually fairly easy to gather those people just because of people we knew, you know. Mm. Our editor-in-chief started it, then she talked to someone, and that person talked to someone, just like the social circle that came out of that. Yeah. And we found this group. But after this group, you know, ended pretty much, we are trying to go out or talk to people and say, hey, you want to come join us? You want to do this with us? Yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah, because we are high school students, we will eventually graduate, and yeah. so we're hoping to have this project carried on by, for, uh, by the next generation of high school students. So we're currently recruiting uh, freshmen and sophomores to hopefully join our team and kind of uh, learn the, thing, the ways that we do things. Yeah, fantastic. Well, and, and this isn't a typical project you know, for, for high school age people to, to take on, is it? You know, <laughs> it's normally assignments and, and things like that, okay. not a, not a full-blown magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely been a lot of work. There's been um, a lot of new things that we've had to encounter, especially on the business side, like mm -hmm. writing grants and applying for nonprofit status, um, things like that that students our age aren't normally um, doing. And yeah. so it's been a really good learning experience for me and I think for a lot of us, just Definitely. learning the business side of things. Yeah. Well, um, let's have a look if we can. We've got some, uh, what, one of the online edi editions actually loaded up. So um, tell us about this I issue. Well, this is our first issue, and its theme is called New Beginnings, mm -hmm. aptly because it's our first one, but also because <laughs> the stories in our magazine often gather around the theme of you know starting something new or finding a new way or a new life, that sort of thing. Yeah. So a lot of the stories come from that, actually. So we have, I think right now we have about 35 stories, mm -hmm. and that is not just in this is issue, but the ones that we've gathered for our next few issues as yeah. well. 
And so these stories are actually represented on almost all the continents so far. We have stories from China, from Australia, from New York. We have stories from across the globe. Wow. And they're all sending us things online. And we're talking to people, creating these new connections that we're actually embodies our mission here. Yeah. Antarctica is the only continent that we don't have a story <laughs> from yet, but we are working we're on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and some of these images are fantastic. Tell oh, us yeah. about those. Mm -hmm. We actually found a lot of these people, these professional photographers who have gone to these crazy, amazing places and had these amazing experiences yeah. and through Flickr, actually, the website okay. that they could post their images. So we go on, we find people who have an interesting story to tell yep. and we contact them, we send them an email, this is what we, who we are, this is what we're doing, would you be in any way interested? Yeah. So a lot of, that's actually a lot of where our stories come from, okay. from through online technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, you mentioned before local stories, so uh, is that a, a case of um, you know, finding people in the community um, that have done interesting things or, or things like that, you know, the usual channels like magazines and, and stuff like that, or is it more word of mouth? So a lot of the stories that we have from our local community are just through word of mouth. So people that in our group um, know who have a really interesting story. So for example, uh, there's a student at Davis High School who uh, battled with cancer and we had her mom write a story for us. Um, okay. There's, yeah, so we have a lot of stories that were contributed to us just from uh, personal connections we have within the group. Yeah. We also actually featured an essay written by a student at Da Vinci Charter Academy mm -hmm. that her teacher actually gave to us and said, hey, you have to check this out. This is a really cool essay. So we looked at it and decided it was perfect for our magazine, so we contacted her. Oh, great. So mostly just through word of mouth since we aren't super well established yet in the community. Yeah. Um, now, and, and in terms of the other uh, stories, do you, uh, you know, the ones that you find from outside the, the local area, do you tend to find interesting images and try to match them up with a story or the other way around? It actually goes both ways. Okay. We tend to find a lot of stories, not really photo stories here in town, here in yeah. Davis, because of the people that we know. Yep. And oftentimes they don't, they're not necessarily professional photographers, so they just have snapshots from their trips or things like that. Mm. So after we fill some, a lot of pages with the stories, we start looking at photo story options. So we feature, I think, two photo stories per issue. Mm -hmm. And those photo stories come from the, mostly the outside world. Yep. Because the professional photographers that have gone to these places and taken these amazing photographs and have a really good story to back it up as well. And those are those kind of things that we fill those pages with. Great. And uh, do you find those photos, you know, you mentioned Flickr before, mm -hmm. do you just kind of you know, sit down in front of the TV and start scrolling through? <laughs> yeah, uh, there's a lot of just <laughs> research on the computer, just uh, scrolling through, you know, not only Flickr, but just other uh, professional photographers' websites and yep. kind of uh, seeing people's work and how that may uh, apply to our magazine, the theme of our magazine, and whether that would be a good fit for our issue. Yeah. Yeah. Because we decide our theme of our issue beforehand, and then we try to find stories that will fit with that. Fit, yeah. Um, and I, I imagine, though, you know, you've come across plenty of, of, uh, of photos and ideas, you know, that have kicked off, oh, we should do this next time. Or <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I think yeah. we have a few months planned in advance at this point with all of our next issues because we find these amazing stories that have the perfect thing, theme behind them. So we're like, oh, we have to do that next time. We just have to. <laughs> Well, I suppose that's a, you know, a fantastic problem to have, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'd rather have that one than others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so and how does an issue come together? Um, you know, you've found your stories and things like that. So how do you, you go from uh, a bunch of great stories and interesting ideas to the finished product? Mm -hmm. So uh, within our team, we have two sides. We have the business side as well as the creative side. Yeah. And so the business side deals with things like writing grants and talking to the community, um, getting funds, things like that. And the creative side is all about editing and producing the magazine. So we have a team of a few editors that goes through all the stories and reads them and uh, critiques them and whatnot. And then yeah. we have um, various other creative staff that go through and use uh, different programs to put the magazine together and add all the pictures and you know make it pretty for people to look at. Yeah, because yeah, that, that's a really professional looking end product. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, how many people um, are part of the team? Um, like I said before, we have a team of 15 students right now okay. with a few trial cases because we're actually, since we started branching out and asking more people, mm. some we've had some few interest, interested parties and they have to have like a one month trial period to see how they fit within the team everything. Yeah. But we have like 15 main people. And it's actually, we have more business staff than we do creative staff because oh. 
we need a lot more people to be able to talk to the community because as high school students we're all busy we've got our extracurriculars and all that yep. but creative staff consists of the editors and then a few staff members that'll help do the layouts mm -hmm. but we definitely have a lot more business staff okay and um so do you, do you have to ask, but you know, go around uh, asking permission, you know, from a lot of people to, to use their content and, and things like that. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're yeah. learning all the legal loopholes that we can possibly do because yeah. sometimes we'll contact contributors and they say, oh well, this photo was published in this book, but you have to talk to my editor to see if you have permission to use it. And so we have to go around, we have to go through all the different steps to finally figure out if we can actually publish this. Yeah, who's got copyright? What exactly. license was it published right. under? Lots of Technicalities, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and the gra yeah, you mentioned writing grants. Um, uh, and is that how necessary is that? You know, is it an expensive process putting the the uh, magazine together? Yeah. So there's <laughs> lots of <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> there, our main fund that we're trying to get money for right now is uh, printing. So mm -hmm. we currently. Um, you know, we didn't have the funds to print our first magazine, uh, yeah. so that's why it's an online only issue, but we're hoping to print our next issues in the future. Um, and so the main funds that we're trying to get right now are for that, but there's also funds to get nonprofit status, mm -hmm. um, funds for programs that we need to make the magazine, funds for our website upkeep, lots of different things. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So we hopefully in the future, if we get enough funds, we have the fundraising all together, that we will print 250 full color copies of our magazine wow. that we will then distribute in both the local community as well as the global community yep. because we have contacts with a lot of global ag global fundraising agencies and different things that we're going to be partnering with and then they have agreed to go bring our magazine over to their home countries and distribute it there and promote it there so hopefully that will bring in more stories from various different social climates and everything so we can get a broader understanding of the entire world yeah so that's where most of our pr most of our income is going to go because that is an extremely expensive process. Yes, but and it, yeah. it's something I wanted to ask about as well, because in an age where pretty much every magazine or journal I can think of is going from print to digital, why go right. the other direction? Yeah, that's actually um, a question that we've asked ourselves a lot. Yeah. And I think the main reason is that we want to be able to reach communities that don't necessarily have internet access. Yep. Um, and so the most Sens sensible way to do this is with the print copy mm. um, and also I think just for us to be able to see our finished product and be able to hold it in our hands is something that's really valuable. We're also trying to expand our audiences to not necessarily this digital age that we live in but yep. also some of the older generations who will be, might be interested in our stories that they ne don't necessarily want to sit there and you know flip through click keep clicking the next page and everything they like the physical copy mm. so we're we're going to be publishing both the online and the print, hopefully, so then we can reach a broader range of audiences. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, because there is real value to, to having yeah, the hard copy exactly. in your hands to be able right. to read. It's much more yeah. satisfying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But uh, do you think it's, it's been an advantage in your case starting with, uh, yeah, with the online magazine and building up a following there because uh, you know, then you'll have an audience of people that want the hard copy rather than you know, printing a stack of magazines and, and having to find people to to give them to? Definitely. I think it is yeah. an extraordinarily good idea to do that. Not only because it's a lot cheaper to get a following through online versus print, yep. but also it's a little bit more e easy access, especially mm -hmm. for this age. Like you said, it's the, everyone is going to online stuff. Yeah. So they can go through, they can flip through, and then decide whether or not they want the print copy to keep forever. Because yeah. we've actually, after publishing this online issue, we've had a few questions asked, you know, when are you coming out with a print copy? I'd love a print copy to keep. or businesses contacting us saying, hey, I would love to put a print copy in my office. Yeah. And you, do you have those? That sort of thing. So, and, yeah. and also because this was our first issue, it was really, um, I think it was nice to not have to worry about printing and just focus on the basics of our magazine yep. and getting the layouts the done. The content. And, yeah. Exactly. Um, and so now that we kind of have that under our belt, we can move on to printing. Yeah, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, uh, now, uh, have you mentioned you know, you've got 15 people working on it. Has it always been that case, or, or did you start with you know, sort of a, a handful of, of people in the beginning? Um, I think we started with like eight or nine, and then we slowly grew from there. Yeah. But it grew pretty fast to this 15 that we've had for a little while now. Yeah. Because just through, pe like I said, people talking to each other, just friends of friends of friends, that sort of thing. Yeah. 
Um, and do you have any particular favourite stories, either you know, already been published or you know, perhaps hints for, <laughs> for upcoming <laughs> issues? Um, one of my favourite stories is we had a, a photographer that we actually got to know through Flickr um, yeah. write a story for us, and he's a part of a project on Flickr called the 100 Strangers Project. Okay. And basically this project was, just like it sounds, he was challenged to uh, once a day go out and take a picture of somebody that he didn't know. Um, and challenge himself to talk to them and to get, and to, get to know them. Um, and so he supplied us with uh, various photos that he took during this project, as well as a story about what this project told him. And it's, uh, it's really interesting because he talks about you know, going outside of his comfort zone and realizing that he is more in common with people than he had previously thought. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which that I, that I suppose is kind of the, you know, the aim of the digital age as well, you know, to yeah. connect right. people. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's very interesting. That's actually one of my favorites also. But I also like some of our photo stories. Mm -hmm. One of our photo stories um, actually is the cover photo, the person who submitted our cover photo. Yeah. She went on a trip through southern China. Mm. And her story talks about how she found what she called a backpacker's paradise yeah. or a home away from home. So she was able to somewhere completely outside of her comfort zone. She was able to find this whole new community that she really connected with and she fell in love with and who welcomed her. And she basically found another home there. And she created the, all these connections with people that she never would have talked to if she didn't take this trip. Yeah. And it's, it actually struck home with me because I, I love traveling too and I want to go to all these places. And it was, <laughs> it was just really hit home for me. Well, it sounds like you'll have no shortage of contacts when you, <laughs> when you do Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and the, so the, this is a recurring theme throughout the whole, you know, throughout the, the whole process, isn't it? Um, the, the connectedness, the, uh, you know, like building communities locally and, and internationally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I think that's fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, now, um, the, I suppose some of the, the contributors, do you, do you ever have uh, trouble you know, actually getting content from them? Or usually, you know, if you, if you find someone with a story to tell, they're happy to tell it. We actually haven't had much problem with that. Yeah. We have only had a few people who said, you know, no, I'd rather not contribute. Yeah. But we've had a lot of people who either just don't respond mm -hmm. or respond saying, yes, I'd love to contribute, and then we never hear from them again. Yeah. <laughs> so with this, like, everyone's busy. We understand that. So what we actually have been doing is doing a lot of interviews mm -hmm. where if somebody's too busy to write a story, they're not comfortable with their writing ability, yeah. which is oftentimes a lot is the case, we'll actually go to someone's house or they'll come to us or we'll have a phone interview and we'll record the interview yeah. and then we'll type it up straight as we hear it. Okay. And so that's actually another option that we've been doing a lot lately. Yeah. So I suppose you're branching out even further from publishing to you know, full on journalism now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a whole adventure for us. Yep. <laughs> So did, do you think that's going to grow as well? You know, do, you, do you see yourself uh, taking on you know, reporters and, and things like that? I think that the main idea of Spectra is to have the community write stories for us. Yep. So I'm not sure if uh, the Spectra team will ever be writing stories. I can definitely see us conducting more and more interviews in the future. Yep. Um, but I think that the main focus of the magazine will really be on collecting stories from the community and publishing those. Oh, excellent. Because then um, it's, it's great to hear you say that because so many projects you know start off with a fantastic idea but then you know sort of follow one good idea or another mm -hmm. and, and kind of lose focus mm -hmm. but you guys are, are you know laser focused yeah. <laughs> to yeah. what you want to do exactly. ah. um, now the uh, so yeah who takes care of the layout that would be your editor-in-chief mm -hmm. linda she is the layout master of our team pretty much <laughs> and since she's a senior she's now passing on the knowledge somewhat for our second issue is going to be headed by our next, or some of the other editors and doing the layout more. Okay. But yeah, she is mostly the one who does a lot of layout and helps oversee that using some various design programs that we've had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, uh, do you tend to use, you know, sort of uh, open source stuff or, you know, is that part of what the, the business people are there for to, to get funding to actually buy the, you know, the design programs and all of that? So it's a little bit of both. Right now, uh, for this first is issue, we use the free trial of Adobe InDesign, which yep. is a 30-day free, free, free trial that you can just <laughs> download from the internet. I imagine that was a bit frantic. <laughs> <getting> <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, as we mentioned, we've been applying for grants and things like that. Um, yeah. And part of that funding is going to be going to buying the full, the full version of Adobe InDesign. So we'll be able to use that for um, our next issue. Excellent. Well, and I suppose then that will help. Uh, you know, you say you, you kind of want to set it up uh, as its own entity, you know, so that newcomers can can join the team and people that graduate can move on. Exactly. So, you know, having a 
having that stable mm. uh, kind of workflow is going to help. Yeah. Oh yeah, especially, in, and so right now we're focusing a lot on not only publishing our second issue, but mm. the business team is focusing a lot on writing bylaws and writing everything, all of our steps down so that when we graduate, yeah. it'll be able to continue with the same vision and the same goal yeah. that we have now. And, and I suppose, yeah, if everything's documented, then you, people won't have to invent things from scratch exactly. again. Exactly. Right, yeah, yeah, we're really working on setting up a strong scaffolding so that when we graduate, um, freshmen and sophomores will be able to come in and use what we have done uh, to keep this thing running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and has it been challenging negotiating the, the legal and the business side of things? It's been very much a challenge because <laughs> as high school students, we don't necessarily know or understand a lot of the legal issues, yeah. but the community has really stepped up in that regard and we have found a lot of mentors throughout the entire community. So we've had, we've talked to various attorneys around town, some bankers have been really helpful. Huh. We have had um, some marketing people from UC Davis talk to us. We have had thousands of thousands of emails going back <laughs> and forth between these people, making sure we're not infringing on anything, we're yeah. not doing anything wrong, we're not going to get sued later on down the road. <laughs> yeah. so it's been really, really big help. Yeah, the community has been a huge help in this project. Um, yeah. They've really stepped up and taken an interest in what we're doing and um, taken initiative to help us, so it's been really great. Oh, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. And have some of these, uh, you know, business and, and legal skills, have they helped when it comes to partnering, uh, you know, with other non-profits and, and things like that? Um, not quite yet. We hope to use these skills in the future to definitely start partnering with things, with different projects, yeah. I meant to say. <laughs> and, but we haven't actually done that since we're still getting on our feet and we're slowly becoming fiscally sound and all of that. Yeah. So we hope to see that in the future, but we have not done that yet. Mm -hmm. um, one of our long-term goals is to make connections with organizations abroad, as we yeah. mentioned before, um, which would be really cool if we got connections there. Yeah. And once we make the connections there, we hope to use some of the extra funding that we get and that after we pay for our expenses mm -hmm. to start some creating some sustainable projects yep. abroad. So after people's donations will now, instead of going towards expenses, will eventually go towards these sustainable projects with our main goals of our project in mind with like empowerment and different things that we're going to hopefully be creating these projects in yeah. other countries. And do you see the magazine as, as kind of being a model, you know, one of, one of the actual projects uh, to, to take overseas? You know, do you see the, the magazine as fitting in there, uh, helping people set up their own version uh, and, and tell, the, tell stories from their own community? Yeah, so um, what, well, our main reason for uh, creating connections globally is that we want to create a better understanding with communities. So mm. um, we're hoping that once we make these connections abroad, we'll be able to have people there write stories for us and contribute to our magazine. Um, and then also, as Shelby talked about, we're hoping to create other projects there with uh, funds that we have, like with our income, um, based around what we like to call the three E's, which is yeah. empowerment, education, and entrepreneurship. So we're hoping to promote those ideas um, in foreign countries uh, through our magazine. Excellent. Yeah. Um, and uh, I suppose that'll that'll need a um, you know a big network of, of organisations and education exactly. institutions and things like that. So those connections will come into play there as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and how's the school been uh, involved or you know or supported or? <laughs> yeah, uh, we have gotten a lot of support from our schools, particularly from Da Vinci Charter Academy here in Davis. Yeah. Um, our principal, Mr. Bunchoy, has been extremely supportive of our yeah. project. Uh, yeah, he's been really interested in, in our cause. Um, there's also a, a faculty member um, who is really connected with the community and has been mm -hmm. able to put us in contact with various people, like Shelby mentioned, um, like uh, business people across town um, and accountants and lawyers and things like that, and that's been super helpful. Yeah, Great. And the, our principal also gave us in contact with the entire New Tech Network, which is Da Vinci is a part of a, a network of schools across the nation that all uh -huh. center around technology and project-based learning. Mm -hmm. So that is another resource that we intend to use in the future. Because it, again, it's building these connections between schools. Yeah. Um, and how do you go about fitting in the workload for the magazine in with all your other commitments? <laughs> It's, it's definitely tough. Um, <laughs> it's a challenge. You, you have to prioritize. You, um, I know for me, I basically, I start each night with my homework, um, mm -hmm. and then when I'm done with that, I'll usually give the rest of my time to Spectra um, yeah. and, you know, send emails or talk to people or, um, you know, work on help out with the creative side if that needs help, things like that. And it definitely means giving up a few hours of TV time or Facebook time and things like that. But I, th I think that it's a sacrifice that I'm willing, definitely willing to make. Yeah. Like Elsa said, you start with your homework and then after that's done because school comes first. 
Yeah. After that homework's done, then you give your rest of the time to Spectra. You sit there at the computer for hours, sending emails, <laughs> calling people, all mm -hmm. these different things. But I think Spectra is a project that we're all really invested in. So mm -hmm. although it is hard work, uh, we're all really interested in getting it done. We're all, uh, we all really want to see this project succeed. So yeah. we're, um, None yeah, of us we're mind. <laughs> yeah, we're very driven to do it. So. Well, and the, I suppose the, whenever something is, is done really well, it looks easy. And the, the magazine as you've produced it, you know, looks fantastic. Looking at it, I would have no idea of, you know, of what goes on behind. But mm -hmm. it's it's not just about putting you know putting the words into the columns and things like that. It, it's it's all the work that goes into oh, yeah. you know, like you say, sending <laughs> hundreds of emails and, and all of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. There's an entire network behind that magazine. Yeah, that's making it work. Uh, and of course, I should mention that's um, it's available at spectra.co.nr, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. Uh, and there's one issue up there at the moment. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we'll actually pr be producing a smaller e-zine or like a teaser issue almost okay. on March 1st that will be coming out on our website as well. And then our next print issue will be coming out on what was it? April 27th, that was it, April 27th. <laughs> yeah. And that will be up on our website as well. Hopefully get some print issues out too. Cool, so a, a print issue roughly every kind of six months? Yeah, we'll be producing a print issue three times a year mm -hmm. and we'll be doing it on a quarterly basis, skipping oh. this summer quarter. Oh, so right. we'll be doing it in the fall, the winter, and then the spring. Because mm -hmm. you need holidays. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then in between the print issues, we're gonna be doing smaller, uh, what we call e-zines, like Shelby mentioned, teaser issues, which are going yeah. to be online only and those will be published on our website, which will be full of stories that um, aren't necessarily going to be put into our print magazine. Excellent. Because that means they didn't actually fit the theme or they were yep. a little too long, things like that. But they're still fantastic stories that we really want to share for the community. Great. Yeah. Well, it's been so, so interesting having you guys on the show today. <laughs> today. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having yeah. us. Yeah, no, thanks very much for coming along. Yeah. And, of course, and best of luck with your first print edition. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and of course, thanks to everyone at home for watching. Uh, now, if you want more information about Spectra or DCTV, you can log on to davismedia.org. Um, you can watch the show again, and we'll have a link to Spectra uh, up on our website too. Um, now, while you're at um, davismedia.org, you can check out all the other programs that we have to offer as well. Uh, that's all we've got time for tonight, so thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. I'm your host, Patrick Shearer, and you've been watching In the Studio.